Hey, how are you? Got a good video here on homeowner's insurance. I'm going to break it down in real simple terms without the you know crazy insurance jargon that's hard to understand so that you can use this for your own knowledge if you need to use this for training for your team. And I will also use it for training for my team. So if you're watching this, please pay attention. It's very, very important understanding the homeowner's HO3 form. So let's dive into it. Okay, so let's start off with the HO3 form. It's a very standard homeowner's form. It's probably what most people have on their home. You know, a standard single family residence HO3. Um, it's a well-packaged, well-rounded policy. There's primary coverages, and then there's also additional coverage, which, is, which I'm not gonna go into. Those are kind of like, you know, bells and whistles and, and extra bonuses on the policy, but these are the main ones that we're gonna go through. So let's start off with the dwelling coverage very very important probably the most important thing on a homeowner's policy your dwelling coverage is for the actual structure coverage for the structure of the home to rebuild the home so let's just say you have an a thousand square foot home right now in california on average these are average numbers and always check with the department of insurance and your insurance carrier on everything this is just for you know knowledge informative knowledge from what i've seen um, but right now in California, to reconstruct a home, it's roughly $300 per square foot to rebuild. So if you have a 1,000 square foot home, your reconstruction cost would be roughly 300,000, okay? So that's to rebuild the home you know, from scratch back up if it completely gets destroyed or burned down. So that's destruction if it gets wiped out by a car or if it burns down from a fire from the kitchen or electrical fuses whatever happens to destroy the, you know, the home, $300,000 to reconstruct. Um, there's different forms of that, reconstruction cost uh, valuation or actual cost valuation. Um, just know that reconstruction cost valuation is better and actual cash value reconstruction is not as good. It gives you a depreciated value of the home. So you wanna use the reconstruction cost always. Um, for your re, you know, dwelling limit. So the next one here, we'll dive into coverage B, which is other structures. This is a um, you know, coverage for any other structure on the property that is not the main structure. So like, let's just say uh, a detached garage or a guest home you have in the back or a shed that you have in the back or fences around the home um, or you know, walls, fences in the front yard, those kinds of things. These are other structures. Um, so typically you see a percentage of the dwelling limit to be the other structures. Sometimes it's 10%, sometimes it's 20%. Um, here, if we just said, let's just say it's 20%, it would equal $60,000 in other structures coverage. So that to rebuild the fence, to rebuild the garage, to detach garage, guest home. Um, that's basically it, other structures, exactly what it sounds like. Um, number three, uh, coverage C, personal property. This is for your stuff in very simple terms. So you're a homeowner, you have furniture, you have TVs, you have you know, computers, phones, um, clothes, china, like a nice dining room, you know, china in your, your kitchen, plates, all those kind of loose items. You don't realize it, but stuff in your garage might add up to you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars sometimes. So. Um, a lot of times we see this also being a function, uh, a percentage of your dwelling limit. Um, so let's just say um, 50%, um, sometimes they're higher. Um, so that would be you know, 150,000 um, in personal property. So that's gonna cover all, like I said, your stuff. Um, fun fact, also if your stuff is in your car, you're parked at Walmart and you're just shopping and everything gets stolen out of your car, you can actually make a claim on your homeowner's policy and they will cover you for your loose items. Even if you're in Europe and you get your camera stolen and your bag stolen and a bunch of stuff, you can claim that on your homeowner's policy um, under personal property coverage. Fun fact, use that for your customers when explaining to them, they always love to hear that. That's a good little bonus tip. Um, and it shows that you know your stuff and you're bringing value always because people want to talk to an advisor who knows their stuff. So next one, loss of use. Loss of use is also kind of similar to exactly what it sounds like. You can't use your home like you're losing the use of your home. So let's just say your home gets burned and it's just like the kitchen's wiped out, your rooms are all burned and like, you know, it's just in, in 
bad, can uninhabitable condition. Your loss of use coverage will throw will bump you know coverage in so that you can have additional living expenses. So if you need to go get a hotel, if you need to get an Airbnb for a month, um, you know other costs associated with losing the use of your home. Um, that's what the loss of use coverage is. Also similar, this one is usually something like 50%. Um, it fluctuates carrier to carrier. So yeah, definitely um, I'm just going based off, you know, one carrier that we use. Uh, 150,000 um, to, you know, have additional living expenses. You'll also see these names kind of change. Like some might say additional living expense for coverage, you know, D instead of loss of use. Um, so be aware of that. Next one, personal liability. This is a very important coverage. This is for you know liability lawsuits. So let's just give you, to give you an example. Your your gardener comes on your property and you have a whole ditch that has like a bunch of nails in there, and he trips and falls and gets just stabbed by a bunch of nails inside this hole. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. Or he hits his head on a stone or something crazy happens, and it's negligent because you, as the homeowner, left it kind of just. Um, you know, in a, in a, you left something that was, that was dangerous and, and, uh, you know, somebody got hurt because of it. Or let's just say you invite your kids over, your kids have some friends over, they're all partying, they're doing their thing in the pool. And then one kid decides he wants to jump off the roof into the pool. He misses and he hits his head. Now you got the other parents suing you as the homeowner because you allowed them to do this. Your liability, your personal liability will cover you for a lawsuit. Um, you know, as long as it's not like completely negligent on your part that they can say like you're not covered. Um, this will cover you for any type of lawsuit that's, you know, claimed against you as a homeowner. Um, so this one is, you, it is, a, is a range that you get to choose. It's not necessarily a function of the dwelling. So this goes somewhere between from what we see on the low end, 100,000 liability up to 1 million in liability. So usually you can get, you know, offer coverage somewhere in between that 100,000 and 1 million. We always recommend at, at the very minimum 300,000, um, which is the underlying requirement to have an umbrella coverage for liability. Um, so 500,000, a million, we don't recommend 100,000. If someone's going for the bare minimum cheap, then sure, you know, if they, you know, explain to them the risks because liability lawsuits can definitely exceed 100,000 lots of times so this is for lawsuits just be aware very very important coverage i would put this coverage and dwelling coverage personally my two kind of most important that i like to highlight with customers you know this is your home your one of your biggest assets that you own and this is your liability all your bank accounts all your money that you own your assets that people can sue you for make sure that these two these two are big big selling points and then obviously everything else is important too but liability and dwelling is, is a big one lastly um, the medical payments medical payments is an interesting coverage i've always kind of had weird feelings about it because it's an it's a it's kind of a gray area weird coverage almost um, because this covers it's a small limit it um, usually is only five thousand um, but i think some carriers offer up to ten thousand on homeowners um, in California. Uh, this will cover stuff like x-rays or an ambulance that you might need um, in a situation. It's funny, there's an ambulance driving by right now. Um, but that's what your medical payments coverage will, your insurance will kick in. Um, typically, like that's if somebody's getting hurt or something happens. Um, that won't go into the personal liability. Liability is if there's a full-on lawsuit that's being um, claimed against you um, or served to you. Um, I hope you, hope you can hear that. And then, um, yeah, so that, you know, some of those expenses, those medical expenses, I mean, they will obviously go into a, like a liability lawsuit, but smaller things, like if it's just an x-ray or an ambulance that you might need, um, your medical payments will kind of cover that there. So um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell, all of these coverages. Like I said, there's additional coverages, like water backup, service line coverage, personal injury coverages that are also usually packaged in. Um, with a homeowner's policy, which I didn't go into here because these are the main ones you really, really need to understand. All those other ones are kind of bells and whistles that certain carriers offer. So hopefully that helps you, um, you know, understand these in a little bit more simple terms. Hopefully if you're using this for your team, um, hopefully that helps them. And if you're watching this and you're on my team, um, please, please pay attention watch this multiple times because it's really, really important 
There's more to this also. Um, anytime you do have questions, always check with underwriting with your company, with your carrier um, and Department of Insurance in your state. Um, but that is it in a nutshell. I hope that helps. Guys, if you got any value from this, please give a like um, to support the channel. Um, please comment something you want to know more about. If you don't understand, I'm happy to answer them and go into deeper detail. Um, and please subscribe if you're not subscribed already to Christy Insurance Guy because I'm going to keep making these series of videos of training. The next one I'll probably go into landlord insurance, um, which is a slightly different than homeowners insurance and you know condos and we're going to go into everything. So keep watching the series. We will continue to bring as much value as possible and hopefully you can use this for yourself. And uh, we'll do some giveaways soon too. Um, so keep an eye out because we got the book coming out soon. We're going to do some giveaways and uh, that's all I got. I hope that helped. I hope that helped. And uh, also check us out on social media, Adelphia Insurance um, on Instagram and Chris the Insurance Guy on Instagram. We'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much. Hopefully that helped. We'll see you soon. Peace. Dive into each individual coverage. Let's start over. Testing one, 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 one. Okay, I'm gonna show you a little something about home, you know, insurance jargon and words. That, okay, shit. <laughs>